All right, welcome into Bobby's Garage today where we are taking a look at ratios again. We are focusing on representing ratios using tape diagrams. This is lesson four in our playlist. We hope you check out the other three before you check this one out. But if not, if this is the only one you need, come on in. Let's look under the hood and see what's going on with ratios today. So today it looks like in the garage I will be able to represent ratios using tape diagrams. That's just a fancy way of saying bar models or strip models. Uh, but really what it is, it, it is a visual model that's going to help us be able to see what's really going on with these ratios. So let's take a look at what we have. Just like every car mechanic has a toolbox where we have different types of tools for different types of jobs, you have a ratio toolbox of things you've learned in this playlist that you can pull out any time that you need to use uh, that you need to use something to help you find an answer to a ratio question. First, we know how to find the rate of a ratio. Can uh, remember that a rate is when we are comparing the different quantities within a ratio. We also have been studying on how to use a scale factor to find equivalent ratios for when we need a little bit different looking type of ratio that's really saying the same thing. And along those lines, we also know how to use an equivalent unit ratio, which we learned about last lesson. Now these are three great tools in our toolbox. Today we want to add another one. We want to add using a visual model to help model and solve ratio problems. So the visual model that uh, Bobby the car mechanic is going to be using today is a tape diagram. So let's find out a little bit more about what this is. So if you remember the definition of a ratio is a multiplicative relationship between two different quantities. So here in this uh, example problem it says in a fish tank the ratio of goldfish to clownfish is 3 to 2. Oh, so we could use a lot of different tools from our toolbox to help us model this. We know how to write this ratio in different ways. So right, we could say three, two, two. We could say three, two, two, like that. Or we already know that it's written like here, like just like this in a word problem. We also know we could flip the ratio and say that two clownfish to every three goldfish or two clownfish to every three goldfish. So we know different ways to write this, but really a tape diagram is going to help us picture this with a visual model. So if you know anything about tape diagrams, there's different types of tape diagrams, but because a ratio is talking about the multiplicative relationship, we are going to be using the multiplicative comparison tape diagram, which is also what you use for ratios. So if I wanted to do this as a visual model, I'd set my goldfish up right here, GF, not for my girlfriend because I'm married, and we got our clownfish right here, right? And I know that for every three goldfish, there are going to be two clownfish. So now what I'm going to do is I'm going to make equal groups, okay? Because multiplication is all about equal groups. And so I'm going to draw three. Oh, that's not really, I'm doing my best. You know, I'm a car mechanic, not an artist. And as Bob Ross says, mistakes are happy accidents. Rest in peace, Bob. And so I have my three groups of goldfish here, right? Just like my picture shows and I have my two clownfish here, right? And so by drawing this, I, I'm actually visualizing that for every three goldfish, there are two clownfish. So if I bought some more and I want to keep the same ratio, I'd have to add three more, right? I'd add three more equal groups here. And then I have to add two more equal groups here. And then I could, that would actually change the ratio uh, the way we could write it. We could find an equivalent ratio of saying six goldfish for every four clownfish, right? So this is the visual model of what's happening with that ratio. Let's take a look at how we can use this to actually solve a problem, not just visualize it. So here we have the same exact problem, but with that two different questions being asked. So it says, in a fish tank, the ratio of goldfish to clownfish is three to two, just like you can see in my picture. If there are 50 fish in the tank, how many goldfish are there? And the other question says, how many clownfish are there? So down here, I'm going to write my two statements. I'm going to say, there are blank goldfish. 
who doesn't love a goldfish? You you go to the you you know you go to the uh, the the county carnival over there, and you you know you ride the bull for five seconds. They give you a goldfish in a bag. Next thing you know, before you get home, it's dead. And then your parents buy you another one just to make it think that it's still alive. Um, you know, I love a good goldfish, right? So there are blank goldfish, and there are blank clownfish. Okay. So now, right, I'm looking for anything about this clownfish and goldfish type thing. And so it told me right here, here's my ratio. This is the same exact problem. So we're going to draw the same tape diagram. But now we know that there are 50 fish in the tank. Okay. So I'm going to switch colors. I'm going to get my black one here. And again, I'm going to have the same multiplication uh, or ratio t uh, tape diagram. So I'm going to have three equal groups here, right? Okay. Here we go. As equals, I mean, these are these are supposed to be equal, but just like I said, you know, I, I ain't no artist. And I'm going to have two clownfish here. And again, so I have three equal groups of goldfish and two equal groups of clownfish. You notice these are all the same size, or they're supposed to be, right? And so now I know this is my ratio, but there's not just five goldfish now. Now there's 50 goldfish in a tank. That's my war problem saying. And so I'm going to make this equal to a total of 50 goldfish. Now, because I drew this, I don't need to make a T chart all the way till I get to 50. All I need to think to myself is, I know there's 50 total, and these are five equal groups. So if I divide 50 into five equal groups, that means I'm going to have 10 in each of my equal groups right here. So now instead of being five fish, there's 50. So instead of there being three goldfish, there's going to be 10, 20, 30 goldfish, and there's going to be 10 20 clownfish. So if I keep the same ratio of 3 to 2 and I go all the way until there's 50, that means there would now be 30 goldfish and 20 clownfish. So this is kind of an easy one, but sometimes in the garage, you get a challenge in the garage, right? Kind of like this here automobile that someone brought in the other day and said, Bobby, can you make this shine like new and run like a Dalmatian? And it's going to take a lot of work, but I know I can do it and be charging a lot of money too, right? And so this is like that rusty old bucket that they brought me, right? This is a garage challenge problem. So let's do it together. So it says a lot of information, blah, 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 blah. Nobody really cares. How much water does container C have? That means my statement's going to say container C has blank liters, and that is a terrible blank, but... Let me, I got to erase that. Bob Ross didn't say that was a happy accident. I know that. Okay, let's make that blank a little bit better. There we go. Container C has blank liters of water, right? So I'm looking for anything about liters, container C, anything like that. So it says there are four identical containers. That's important. A, B, C, and D that have a total of 2,360 liters of water. Uh-oh, I see a ratio. The ra Ooh, this is three ratios. The ratio of A, B, and C is 4 to 1 to 3. And we know that container D holds 280 liters. Okay? So that's a lot of information. But I see that I'm going to need a ratio tape diagram, a multiplicative comparison, a multiplicative relationship tape diagram for A, B, and C. And so here I have A, and I know that there are four equal parts for A. So I'm going to do my best to do four. Like I said, you know, I try to make them equal, but I'm a car mechanic. Okay, there we go. So that's four. For B, right, for every four of those, there's going to be one for B. Okay, and then for C, there's going to be three. So my ratio is four to one to three. Okay, and so by drawing this out, I'm actually going to be able to kind of visualize this a little bit. Okay, so there we go. I need three right there. And then container D down here right? Container D has 280 liters, right? So I'm just going to go ahead and draw this. I don't know how many that's going to be, but I'm just going to do my best and kind of guesstimate like that'd be 280, okay? And I know all together, when I add those, that's going to be 2,360, okay? And so the point of tape diagrams is always to try to get to equal groups. And so right here, I see one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight equal groups. And this one is not equal. So I need to get rid of that. So I'm going to go ahead and cross this out. And the way I can cross it out is by just subtracting 280 from my total. OK, 
okay? So now when I subtract 280 more on the floor, go next door, you know, get 10 more, do all that good stuff, okay? I know that two minus two, right? Now, when I got rid of my 280, I have 2,080 left, and I know that now, this is just like that problem before, I have uh, eight equal groups, so all I need to do is divide 2,080 divided by eight. And now here, see, when you do that, you're going to get 260, okay? Just trust Bob the Car Mechanic. I'm not an artist, but I can do math pretty well. So now each of these groups is going to be worth 260, okay? And now I can figure out my statement. My statement was asking me how many does C have. So I didn't really care about A or B. I had to use those to find C. And now right here I can see that I have three equal groups of 260. So when I multiply 260 times 3, this year I'm going to get 780. So there are 780 liters of water in container C. So that's a challenge problem. That's kind of your next step for being able to use ratio visual models to help you solve these. But this is a great tool if you get a question like this where you don't have to really think too much about using your ratio and scale factors and unit rates, go ahead and draw out the visual model and then be able to use that. So this is just another great ratio tool to put into your toolbox. Thank you so much for joining Instructor Beats today. We hope you'll check out our other ratio lessons and our ratio song and everything else we have on our YouTube page, Instructor Beats Official. As always, please subscribe. You can follow us on Instagram at, at Instructor Beats. Thank you so much for coming in and, and doing some math today with Bobby the Car Mechanic. Instructor Beats, out!